Hello everyone, Steve Meshry here. I'm here in Galaxy Design Showroom and my goal is to go ahead and show you today what comes in one of our medium French shell combos and uh, what it consists of, how to go about measuring it, as well as how to go about installing it. I'm going to try to keep it short and cover as much as possible. If I don't cover anything or if you have any comments, we would love to hear about that on our website. You can visit our website at www.galaxy.com dash design.com so let's go ahead and get started what you get in our box is usually uh, a box like this and there's always bubble wrap that comes with all of our packages so you want to first go ahead and remove your bubble wrap what you're going to see is you're going to see uh, our crown as well as two of our hold backs that are sitting here and these particular combination is done in a crystal I'm going to set these apart here to the side. You also will receive uh, two of our scrolls. These scrolls also are French scrolls. These are the most popular. They do come with the double wire on them when you buy the hardware. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this one aside as well. And then at the bottom of the box, what you're going to receive is you're going to receive the instruction manual as well as you will receive some... Uh, zip ties and you also will receive a little bag like this that's got the stud in it and the the hex wrench couple of hooks in addition to that you also will receive some color screws and the last thing uh, that you will receive is all the arms and the extension screws that are inside of them I'm gonna go ahead and cover all of that piece by piece as we go further into the video so to get started, you're going to need some tools. The tools that you're going to need, it's really simple. You need a drill, and it has to have a hex head on top. This is for number eight is what we use. You're also going to need a tape measure. I do recommend a one-inch tape measure. It's a little bit more stiffer. And then you're also going to need a Phillips screwdriver as well as a ladder. Those are the tools that you're going to need in order to get started. Now that we've got the items and we made sure that we have all the items in package, the next step that you want to do is you want to go ahead and take the uh, mounting brackets as well as a screwdriver here. You want to just go ahead and simply loosen up the screw. Just gently go ahead and loosen it up. Do not remove the screw. And just go ahead and remove, you know, loosen it up. And then you want to just go ahead and push out the extension screws that are inside of it. I like to do this and then once I'm done with that I like to just go ahead and hand tighten them and put them back in the box. And uh, I'll go ahead and do that on a few of them here so just show you what we're doing next. Once I have went ahead and done this and hand tighten them then I'm just gonna go ahead and go over to the squirrels and uh, I'm gonna turn them over just on where they're at and simply remove these uh, nuts that are here that are holding the wires in place and go ahead and take the wires out and set them aside and put the screws back pardon me put the nuts back in there and just lay them back down so you know that one is done and then I'll do the same thing on the other one Now once I have done this, I'm going to go ahead and take the extension arms and loosen up the screw by my hand and take the extension out and put it on these holes that are located on either ends of the scrolls. And I'm just going to go ahead and sleeve this back on there. I'm not going to tighten it. I'm just going to leave it loose like that. Do the same thing here with this other one. I'm going to take it out, take out the extension screw and just go ahead and put it on here and then sleeve this back on. This will get me started and get all my hardware ready to go and now I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the measurements. So in order to mount one of our medium combos you have to have minimum of seven inches above the window and four inches on either side of the window. Sometimes some of you have only two inches above the window or three inches above the window, but you've got to have more space on either side of the window to make sure the combo works. 
I'm going to go ahead and show you what measurements that you have to have in order to make sure that these crowns fit properly and gets mounted correctly. Your first measurement is going to be the measurements which is the width of the window. Your second one measurement is going to be the space above the window which is from the bottom of your crown molding to the top of the window molding. That's your second one. Your third measurement is going to be the measurement which is from the top of the window molding down to the floor. Then your fourth measurement is going to be the space on the right of the window and the space on the left of the window. So I have plenty of space around these windows and I'm going to be able to go ahead and put this crown up and I'm going to show you how to go about doing that next. So we're now ready to go ahead and start mounting our hardware. The first step is just start from the center of the window. We've already marked the 12 inches high and we've marked already the center. So I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, crown up here. This will be the top of the crown which is at 12 inches and then I'm going to go ahead and just uh, install this crown up at the 12 inch mark. So the crown is now mounted and it's in the center and it's at 12 inches high, which is my ceiling height. We're going to go ahead and mount the squirrels next. Now that the crown is mounted, we're going to go ahead and measure from the center of the mounting bracket to the top of the window frame. This will allow me to make sure that the squirrels are also lined up in the same level. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and measure our swags. So if you purchased one of our uh, drapery packages, you obviously have gotten one of our perfect swag. Our perfect swags already come with the orbit and it's already been pulled. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put the wire through the swag. What I wanna do is I wanna make sure that you do this right. So we are working on the right swag and this is the right scroll. So you wanna make sure that the wire follows the curve as you can see, this is how it follows it. Now, if I put it the other way or this way, it kind of will look weird. But this is the correct way. So you want to make sure that it follows it. You can also do it from the back. And that will also give you the full curvature of having it followed correctly. Now, once I've done that, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start from the bottom of the swag. And I'm going to slip the fabric onto the wire. This will give me my swag. And uh, so I have my swag ready to go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and measure the distance from the orbit to the end of that wire. That is the measurements that you're gonna need in order to go ahead and install your squirrels. Now that I've got the measurements from the swag, I want to make sure my swags start from my center of the crown. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark it right here. This would be the width of my swag. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure the height of the swag, uh, pardon me, the height of the bracket is correctly. So this is the same height as where my um, crowns are going to be mounted. So I'm going to go ahead and put those all up in the same level. This is where I'm going to be starting. So the mounting brackets for my scroll and my crowns are all in the same line. So 
So now I've got it all mounted, and these are all lined up. And all I need to do now is just go ahead and put this up as much as I like. The minimum I have to have is four inches, so this would work just fine. And I'm going to leave it right there, and this is where I'm going to go ahead and mount my scroll. Now that I've got the scroll and the crown mounted up, uh, all I need to do is just to go ahead and put up the hold back and then we're ready to go ahead and move forward by putting up the drapes next. The hold back is the next thing that you want to go ahead and mount. So these uh, hold backs are usually mounted 48 inches from the floor up. So I'm going to go ahead and just mark my 48 inches first. And then I know I want to be out about 4 inches so I'm going to mark that next. That's where my bracket is going to go, and I'm just going to go ahead and put it up. just simply go ahead and slip it on there. Now there are set screws on the back of these so what you want to do is just take your Phillips screwdriver and just simply tighten the set screwdriver. I like to go ahead and have these project out somewhere around five to six inches if it's you know possible. So you see I have it projecting out about five inches and that's sort of how much you want to be able to project it out it allows you to have the drapes go over it really nice and clean. Now we're ready to go ahead and uh, put our drapes up. All the draperies do come with a label on them which identifies the room, the window, and the position of the drape as well as the length of the draperies. And they also have a hook on the short end of it which is goes for your return. And then there's always a splice on the drapes as well. So what you want to do is you want to identify your the right wire which is the correct wire this happens to be the right one I'm gonna go ahead and just insert it in through the pocket and have it come out on the other end this will allow me to go ahead and put them up nice and easy So now I have uh, both ends of the wire ready to go and now these drapes also have a return on them which I'm going to explain in just about a minute and uh, this will allow you to go ahead and put them up. The next step we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and put up the swags first because that's the first layer usually it's called the over swag and uh, we'll go ahead and do that next. My right swag is now ready to go. Uh, I have went ahead and slipped it over the wire and now I'm ready to go ahead and put it up. In order to do this, all you do is just simply remove the nuts that are in the back of the studs of the squirrel, remove those, set them aside for now, and then go ahead and put your wire on the back of these, the squirrels. Now that I've done that, uh, my swag is ready. Uh, the next layer I'm gonna put up is gonna be my draperies. So my drapes are now ready to go. I also have them on the wire. And I'm going to go ahead and just simply put it on the back of the scroll as well as on the back of the swag. You could do it either way. These can go in the front of the swags mm -hmm. or they can go on the back of the swags. This particular mm -hmm. style happens to be okay, one okay. that the swag is in the front. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put these up on the uh, same studs that are holding the uh, scrolls. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the nuts back on there.
So I'm just going to go ahead and take the nuts and I'm just going to go ahead and simply uh, place them on the back of the studs to make sure that these stay secure and do not fall out. I don't like to over tighten these nuts because I can move the wires back and forth a little bit to make my adjustment easily. Once I'm done with all of those, then I can go ahead and tighten them and do whatever else I want with it for that matter. So this here is uh, what we call the return and that's where the hook is. The purpose behind this is to have it uh, turn around and meet the wall so it can cover the gap and the light that's coming through. In order to mount this, all you have to do is just take simply and a screw and uh, mount it right beneath the mounting brackets and make sure that it's left out a little bit. So I like to leave it sticking out a little bit and then once that's done I just do go ahead and rest this pin on top of that and there you go and there's our return. All of our packages also come with a, uh, a full threaded stud that has a hex head on the end of it and we also provide you with this utility wrench that fits in the back of this. Now this is there uh, to go on the back of the crown and uh, just hand tightening it would be sufficient and uh, you will notice that this is different size than the uh, mounting brackets therefore you cannot actually uh, put it anywhere else other than the center of the crown. I'm going to go ahead and mount it up so that you can see. So now we've got all the hardware up for one side and the cord is ready to go. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put up the other side and then we're going to bring both swags, tie them together and just simply rest them over the stuck. As you can see it's going to look really gorgeous. Um, we're going to show you what the complete product is going to look like. Now that I've got the both sides of the hardware up and both scrolls are up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tie the swags together and uh, rest it over the stud that goes in the middle of the crown. Once this step is done, then we're just gonna go ahead and dress the drapes up and that would be our last step. So to do this, uh, what I do is I go ahead and uh, put a bunny ear on one side of the, and one of the swags, leaving the extra string available. And then I'll just go ahead and take the other swag that's right here and just tie them together. That bunny ear will allow me to go ahead and just loop that over that center stud without having to um, hassle with it in the back there. So I'm just going to bring them together. Tie them up. And now I'm ready to go ahead and mount them on the back of the crown. And I'm almost done. I'm going to hide these threads, tighten it up a little bit, adjust the orbits a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and dress it up next. Now I have everything up and uh, this is my favorite part, it's called the dressing. So as far as the dressing goes, you can use your hand by just putting some guides on this. I sort of did this a little earlier to get it prepared for us to put it up. But I like to go ahead and just use my hand as a guide and just put some folds in the draperies. Once I've done that, then what I like to do is just let the fabric down like this and just kind of go from the, around here, because our drapes are extra long, I like to just go ahead and grab them from down here and sort of work my way up by keeping the folds in place and working my way up again in an angle and uh, towards the hold back right here. Once I have it up here, then I do is just simply go ahead and take that fold right here and rest it over the arm. Once I have rested over the arm, then I'll come back in and I pull my folds out and I have a nice layer of drapery. Then it just leaves me for the bottom where I'll go ahead and take the bottom and then simply push it out 
and then tuck it back under. These are our puddle drapes. They are very lavish and um, they are definitely extra long and they'll accommodate what you're trying to do and they look gorgeous. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other window as well and uh, we'll come back and look at the finished product. So as you can see, the draperies were not that difficult to put up. Uh, it took a little bit of time, however, though, uh, it, all the hardware, everything comes with the instruction. That's the whole idea behind us putting videos out there for you so that you can do it yourself or hire someone to go ahead and do it for you. And we would love to hear from you. If you need any sort of a support, we're available through email, telephone, <laughs> FaceTime, as well as uh, Skype. So we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, don't hesitate to give us a call if you have any concerns whatsoever. And thank you for watching.